This is the fourth and final section of the Travelling Salesman Problem Chapter, Chapter 5. And this is using the nearest neighbour algorithm to find an upper bound. So this is just a different way of finding uh, an upper bound for the Travelling Salesman Problem. And the reason we use it is because uh, previously we've used minimum spanning trees to find an upper bound and just doubling the weight of a minimum spanning tree. That's fine if the network is small, but if the network is large, that can take a very long time to do. So here's the algorithm. So first of all, we start with any vertex. Then we select the nearest vertex that has not yet been visited. So we'd probably use a distance table to do this. And then we repeat until all vertices have been visited. And then we need to make sure that we return to the starting vertex. Then we choose a different starting vertex and then we'll repeat this process again. So what we'll have are lots of different tours through the network uh, with different weights. And then uh, when we've, uh, all of the vertices have been selected, so we'll have all these different tours starting and finishing um, at different vertices, maybe starting at A, finishing at A, starting at B, finishing at B and so on. We choose the tour with the lowest weight as an upper bound. So example nine, apply the nearest neighbor algorithm using A, then B, then C as starting vertices to find uh, an upper bound to the traveling salesman problem. Okay, so let's uh, do our working and we want to start at A. Okay, so I'm starting at A, I want to see where I'll go next. Now, the way I'll do the working is going to be very similar to Prim's algorithm. The only difference is I only look at the one column and that is the vertex I'm, I'm currently at. Now I'm not going to cross out row A because I'm going to need this to get back to where I start. Okay, so I just look at column A and the lowest weight is um, the 7. That's C. So I go from A to C. So this was number 1. This is going to be number 2. So 7 to get to C. Right, okay. I now look just at column C. Now I forget about this top row for the moment because I'm going to need that to get back to A at the end. So don't include these numbers here. Yeah, so maybe what we can do is highlight this row to show we're going to need it at the end, but don't cross it out. Right, so the next highest weight is going to be six. There, that's the lowest weight in column C. And that will take me to E. And that's six. Okay, so we'll put three here. So see how it's similar to Prim's? Apart from we didn't cross this out and we only look at one column. With Prim's, I'd now be looking at all three columns. Here, I just look at one column. So I can see that the lowest weight that's left is going to be this one here, the 14. That will take me to B. So 14 here to go to B. In case I've crossed it out, B, I will put four. So that's going to be the fourth one that I visit. So let's have a look at this one here. So I have to use this one. There's no other choices. Is there? So I've got to use the 24 to take me to D. So 24 here to go to D. And then I've got to go from D back to A. So it's got to be the 29 there. So D back to A is 29. So you can see that basically you're, when you get to the end, you're forced to use certain uh, edges or arcs. You don't have choices. So the tool for this is A, C, E, B, D, A. And the weight of this tour is going to be 7 plus 6 plus 14 plus 24 plus 29, which is 80. 
Okay, so now we're going to repeat the whole thing again, but this time we're going to be starting at B. So I'm going to remove these here and now start at B. So that'd be number one. So what I'll do, I'll put this on row B just to remind me that I'm going to need this at the end, but not to use those values. Then the lowest weight is going to be the eight. So I go from B to A with a weight of eight. So I'll now cross out A. Now look at column A and the lowest weight is going to be the seven here. So that's going to be the third one. So seven to get to C. OK, so now we're going to look at column C, then um, the lowest weight there is E. So you can cross that out. So E is going to be fourth. And that will be six to get to E. So now um, E to D, well, we've got no choice. It has to be the 21 to get to D. 21. And then finally, D back to A, sorry, D back to B this time, D to B. So D to, to B, so that's got to be this one here, the 24. So the tour for this one is B, A, C, E, D, and the weight, that will be, 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 21 plus 24, which gives a weight of 66. And then lastly, starting at C. So let's clear our table again and start at C and see where we end up. So C is going to be number one. I will just put a ring around that so I don't use those values until the end then I can see the lowest weight in C is the 6 so I'm going from C to E with a weight of 6 where do I go from E so E the lowest weight in this column here is the 13 so then I go from E to A and that's 13 where do I go after A? This makes that a little bit clearer. So um, A, I'm going to look down here. So um, then I will go to B next, E to B, which has a weight of eight, B a weight of eight. Then where do I go from uh, B? Well, I have to go to D. That's gonna be a weight of 24 to D, so we can cross that out there. And then we want to go back to our starting position. So we want to go back to C. So we need to look at uh, C to D, which is 23. 23. So we can write down our tor here, which is C, E, A, B, D, C, and the weight of this tour is 6 plus 13 plus 8 plus 24 plus 23, which gives a weight of 74. So remember to find um, an upper bound for this problem, we pick the lowest weight, which is 66. So we'll say since the lowest weight is 66, an upper bound for this problem, for this problem is 66. Should we just highlight that then? So this is example 10. This is a table, or this is the table of distances from example eight. We found that the optical solution lay in the following interval. Okay, let's just 
underline that there, highlight it. Use the nearest neighbor algorithm using A then B as starting vertices to find upper bounds for the traveling salesman problem. Right, so let's start by starting at A. So we circle row A, we don't cross it out and we put one above column A. We look for the lowest weight in column A. That's going to be 47. So we now move on to column B. The lowest weight in B is 121. So we now move on to column C. The lowest weight in column C is 200. So we now move on to column E. The lowest weight in column E is 131. So we now move on to column H, vertex H. The lowest weight in column H is 70. So we now move on to vertex F, column F. The lowest weight in column F is 144. So we now move on to column G, vertex G. The lowest weight in column G, which is actually just the last remaining weight in column G, is 155. So we now move on to vertex D. Then we need to return from D back to A and using the table that has a weight of 382. The tour is A, B, C, E, H, F, G, D, and the weight is 1,250 miles. So we're now going to repeat the process, but this time we're going to be starting at B. So we circle row B, because we're going to need this for the return uh, journey at the end, and we look for the lowest weight in column B. The lowest weight is 47, which takes us to vertex A. Now in column A, the lowest weight is 84, which then takes us on to vertex C. In column C, the lowest weight is 200. So we now move on to vertex E. In column E, the lowest weight is 131, which then takes us on to vertex H. In column H, the lowest weight is 70. So now we move on to vertex F. In column F, the lowest weight is 144. So we now go from vertex F to vertex G. And then uh, the last visit is going to be column G. So we have to go to D which is 155. And then from D, we need to return back to A like this. Now you might find it easier just to put arrow A at the end here. I'm going to do it this way. So we're going to go from D back to, sorry, not D to A. D back to B. Let's get that correct. So D, B, 402. So now we'll write down what the tour is starting at B and what the weight is. So the tour is B, A, C, E, H, F, G, D, B. And the weight is going to be the sum of 47 plus 84 plus 200 plus 131 plus 70 plus 144 plus 155 plus 402. And that gives a total weight of 1,233 miles. So let's just highlight these for the moment because we're not quite finished in terms of what we need to do. So we've got these two weights here and here. So we're going to comment on this in part B. And part B, the question says, Review the interval containing the optimal solution and amend if necessary, giving a reason for your answer. Well, I've got an upper bound here of 1,237. My lowest value 
um, from performing the nearest neighbor algorithm is 1233. So let's amend it first, then we'll comment on it afterwards. So my new interval is going to be 971 um, greater than, or my optimal solution is going to be greater than uh, 971 miles, optimal solution. But now my upper bound is going to be less than or equal to this 1,233 miles. Now we need to give a reason. So here's my reason here. We changed the upper bound to 1, 2, 3, 3 from the nearest neighbor algorithm because we want the optimal solution interval uh, as small as possible. So having this as an upper bound gives a smaller uh, optimal solution interval, which is what we want, than having one, two, three, seven miles. So you should now be able to do exercise 5D on pages 112 to 122. Just a quick recap. When we're looking at finding um, an interval for our optimal solution, when it comes to the upper bound, when we carry out the nearest neighbor algorithm, the um, smallest weight, the lowest weight, can give us a better or lower upper bound because we want this interval, we want to make that as small as possible.